What's up everybody out there in YouTube land? Wrath2501 here. Alright guys, time for another Wheezy TF2 video. This is every ranking every heavy weapon in MVM. So this is a video for Walker. I think he's already seen it, so that's why his loadout is the way it is. Anyway, so let's see how he rates the heavy loadouts. Let's go. And worst weapons in MVM. That's right, gentlemen. Yep. Today we're back again with another MVM tier list. This one being made for the Russian man himself, the heavy. Same the rules as man. always. This is a two cities tier list. It's being made under the context of a solo queuing player, and each weapon is ranked within the respective weapon slots. So melee yeah, weapons things will are different be the same if your team has a specific guns. strategy. No, this does not make them equally as good as each other. And of course, this is just my opinion based off my own experiences. If you have a different opinion, Leave it in the comments below. Let's go. Or shut up. <laughs> the fist. bottle broke yeah. the trend of stock melees being D tier, and now the fists bring us back down to reality. Ah. And you know the reasons why Thank at this point. That. There's no oh, reason this. to ever use them for damage, and they provide zero utility to heavy as a class. Yeah. Eh, at least this one has a talk kill. Oh, it does. Cool. To my knowledge, the Holiday Punch is the only weapon in the game that has had its main draw completely stripped away in MVM. You really? can't make robots laugh anymore, so now it's literally just a fist reskin without oh. being able to damage from behind. Maybe it you used to be able to, to make robots laugh, little bit, but at that this point, it it's completely almost. unusable. The all shotguns. The, the shotguns. They were D tier for soldier, D tier for pyro, and surprise, surprise, they are D tier for heavy. Fat Scout may be a funny meme in MVM, but in <laughs> terms of actual damage, it pales in comparison to any mini. I think it's in the just game. a funny meme so in general. So there is no reason to ever pull out a shotgun. D tier. The Natasha is good Natasha. for slowing down super scouts, Bruh. and that's about it. I'm not saying that's a bad use case, but you suffer a 25% damage penalty just for that one benefit. In no world is yeah, this trade good. worth it, well, especially when there are the like time, seven other ways of stopping waves, a super a scout. Lot of it super stops scouts. other robots too, but generally that's also a bad thing because you're making it more difficult to achieve your maximum DPS as heavy through damage ramp up and by keeping them at a distance for an extended period busters. of time. Never use this minigun. It sucks, and I don't know why people pretend it's good. Dude. You could maybe you debate C tier with this one, but I just think the Tommy Slav is also just a massive downgrade from the other miniguns. Well, the this, faster yes. rev is fine, even if the silence doesn't mean shit, but this weapon's yeah. main draw is normally its accuracy. But this doesn't really matter in MVM. If you're shooting from afar, it's usually against hordes of small robots, in which case, so what if the spread is bigger? There is yeah. a very strong chance that that missed bullet will just hit the robot on the side of your target anyways. And as for giants, your goal is to get as close as possible to achieve your maximum damage through ramp up, and this is a range where the Tommy Slav is unquestionably worse off, even in casual. Yeah. So the benefits are barely noticeable, but that 20% slower firing speed sure as hell is. And that yeah. makes this weapon completely not worth using. Yeah, I would put the Tommy Slav at the bottom for those, but I'm a dude. bit torn on the Warrior Spirit, because statistically, with 800 credits of spending combined with the Buffalo Steak Sandwich, the Warrior Spirit will slightly outdamage a fully maxed out minigun when doing damage to the tank. But huh. a minigun with mini crits will outdamage the melee, and typically you'll have a soldier popping buff banner whenever this happens. But if your soldier mm, yeah. is running conch, which is very plausible, this is actually Heavy's best means of doing damage to the tank. But it's also it really? only really useful late game when 800 credits doesn't mean as much, similarly to the mm. Sandman. But I think that's a good enough use case to keep it outside of no, D tier. No, 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 no. Each lunchbox item has a primary effect and a secondary effect, no. and the Delocus bar gets the short end of both sticks. No, no. Its primary effect of 50 extra overheal when used is fine, no. but the fact it doesn't stack with a medic's overheal with the exception of the quick fix makes it hard to ever get use out of whenever you're not on a team with a medic. You can also yeah. throw it down as a small med kit on the floor for your team to use, but other lunchbox items get a medium health pack, so True. it's outclassed there as well. The eviction notice is good because you move 15% faster while it's active, and that's literally the only good thing about this weapon. The movement speed on hit fast. might sound good on paper, but typically when you want to get speed off a robot, you still actually want to, you know, kill them. And the eviction notice does fuck all damage-wise, so it Doesn't. can never be useful in that respect. 
Still though, it's fine, but for movement speed options, there's a better choice coming up. The Fists of Steel are a Fisting pretty useful weapon, but they're not all that versatile. Taking 40% less damage while in the line of fire it's does like have its damage. moments, and when you do get hit, you will notice the difference. But generally speaking as heavy, you want to avoid situations where you could be bursted down if your medic isn't nearby, but if you do find yourself in one, the Fists of Steel will help you survive it. As an on-the-fly escape tool, it has a lot to be desired thanks to its slower pullout time, but it has a purpose, so it's pretty alright. Really? If the Killer Gloves of Boxing had like two more extra seconds of crits, I would probably put it in A tier, but there are too many moments where your crits will just run out the moment a giant robot drops down. Occasionally, the crits will pan out and you will get that 300% increased DPS, it just doesn't happen enough for me to put it any higher. It also has an amazing niche on Empire Wave 6 with the 20 uber medic pairs that spawn, as you can chain yeah. kill with your crits in the same really? way that a demo knight would. So it has huh. its moments and it has a niche, I think B tier is fine. But the second not. banana has the but same small not. health pack drop effect as the chocolate, which does make it worse as a no, support no, no, tool, no, no, but no, being no, able no, to restore no. 200 HP is the second best primary benefit of all the lunchbox items. And theoretically, it can be used more often thanks to the faster charge time. This Dude, just doesn't happen all that much. It's there. not a bad item, just not the best. Buffalo. So as I mentioned, the Buffalo Steak Sandwich has its niche against tanks, combined with the Warrior Spirit. But this item has something that the Warrior Spirit doesn't. Utility on every single wave. The Buffalo okay. Steak Sandwich acts as a medium med kit, unlike the banana or the chocolate. So as a pure support tool, it's better than both of those. This weapon mm. has gotten a reputation of being pretty bad in MPM, but I completely disagree. The medium med kit drop alone is enough to make this weapon viable. That okay, was a nice couple are. minute break from minigun, so let's heater. talk about them again. The Huo yeah, yeah. Long Heater is a weird one, in that this weapon cool requires part. a good engineer to be useful. If your NG is trash, this gun will chew through ammo like a motherfucker. But even yeah. then, although the ammo all drain the can be offset by an that, NG, though. that 10% damage nerf will not. But it's balanced out by this weapon doing 20% more damage to burning targets. And this is where we see a weird dynamic. The Huo Long Heater will usually always be worse off against small robots because you're typically too far to set them on fire. But on Giants, this yeah, thing does have enough time that. to set That's them on fire work. and get that increased DPS yeah. if your team is bad enough to not kill them in 2 seconds. So, you might have noticed the same conundrum that I have. This weapon stacks positively with a good engineer, but negatively with a good demo, a good spy, or a good burst soldier. And with those teammates, okay. you're mostly only getting the 10% damage nerf. And that's why it's in B tier. It's just not that reliable in the context of a solo queuing player. Oh. Jumping straight into no, S tier, -tier we have the S? Guru. This is no surprise if you've seen the other tier lists, because the speed increasing <laughs> weapons are usually always the best. It helps you reach the front lines quicker, helps you get in position faster, and helps you retreat more safely. As a heavy, you go from the slowest class in the game to average class speed just average by bringing this speed. weapon out. And I know the Guru has a health draining mechanic, and so does the eviction notice for that matter, but usually getting to where you need to be faster trumps doing so at full health. And that's mostly because a good medic will glue his medigun to your ass the moment yeah. you're on sight. The Guru Actually, has the most general application of all down. of Heavy's <laughs> melees, and therefore, I think it is the best. The sandwich. For the best secondary in the game, sandwich and the single greatest lunchbox strong. item, we have the Sandwich. This weapon has the best primary effect of healing you all the way back to full, and is tied for the best drop effect with the Buffalo State Sandwich medium, medium of a medium medium med kit for your team. Yep. That's really it. It's the best of both worlds for both of its uses. Oh, and although damn. it takes longer to recharge, that's, its combination of support and self-sufficiency aren't beat by else. Minigun, I know some huh? people might think the stock minigun deserves A tier instead of S, but honestly, I think this might be Heavy's most underrated weapon. The stock minigun just weapon. does so much right. It has the second highest damage output of any minigun, and it's incredibly consistent in terms of how much damage it does. But its biggest strength is being extremely adaptable without the downside of any nerfs. 
it's the only mini gun in the game without a damage penalty that allows you to position yourself wherever you need to be due to the heavy speed when revved up being on mm. par with the giant's walk speed. This makes it the best mini gun for consistently getting damage ramp up and although the base damage is lower Incoming than what's coming scouts. next, I still think it's good enough to be put in S tier. So that's why he shows you the fast scouts. Yeah. The you reason go. why brass the brass beast. beast is so good and my pick for the best mini gun Dude, in the game it shreds is because everything of this thing's but tanks. damage potential. 20% more damage in every situation is an insane increase for a class that was already the best single target damage dealer in the entire game. However, with all that power comes with the downside that needs to be comes worked responsibility, with. Comes responsibility, actually. You 60% slower when revved up than you normally would with any other minigun. So not only does it make it more difficult yeah. to dodge projectiles from small robots Dude. you'll be fighting from range, but it also makes it take longer to get close to the giants, it, and therefore not achieve your maximum damage ramp up as up fast. Ammo. That said, this can be offset with a good medic, preemptive positioning, buying uber canteens, or more health on kill to make you more bulky. And yeah, yeah. those cost money money, but you can't and upgrade destroy, the base damage of your gun in MDM, so you'll buy whatever you can to make this very unique and upside and, uh, worth it. It's not uh, as versatile as stock, and generally speaking, you'll need a decently competent team to not be blown up while century, using dude. it, you but have to, for its you have to, sheer power, you have to, the Brass you have to, Beast to, is an to, easy to, 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 and that's it for the tier list. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more NBM related content. I got a shitload of videos coming out soon, and I hope you stick around to watch them. That's all I got. See you guys. Okay, so I have... The only problem I have with this one is the Natasha. Okay, the Natasha is very useful. I mean, yeah, he's talking about this is only on Twin Cities, but the Natasha is very useful on any of those waves that have a shitload of those giant scouts, especially when they send out more than one at a time. That's like in some of the higher difficulties in, uh, you know, the, not the man up, the, uh, you know, the, uh, God, I can't remember, what, whatever the one we usually play is. But yeah, there are some, in some of the higher difficulties, they have multiple of those giant scouts. And they're always good for dealing with those scouts. They're a pain in the ass, and they're a good way for slowing down. Also, it's a good way for getting rid of uh, sentry busters, because it slows them down, and just as they're about enough so they can be taken out long before they ever get close to a sentry gun, and then when they're about to blow, the pyro, using his air blast, blows it into a group of robots and kaboom! No more robots. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. Does the Sentry Buster kill all the robots? I think it, it's all, it seems to, I don't know. Anyway. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, like this video and subscribe, guys. Help us to keep growing back to where we were before. We're moving up and we're doing some pretty good numbers, guys. I really appreciate everybody out there who subscribed and told other people to subscribe. I super appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. And, of course, click on the link to the original down in the description. Get down to Weezy tf 2s channel, like the original, and sub to him on his channel. I will see you guys next time. Tune in every day for new content. Bye-bye.